All right, we're good. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to World Hoppers. Today, we're going to be talking about some anticipated spring releases and maybe a little bit before spring since it officially starts during March. Um, but we have a pretty nice group of, uh, we have fantasy readers, sci-fi readers, horror readers, romance. Did I say romance? We have a nice mix in this, uh, in this group. And uh, Mara is going to kick us off with some some of hers. Well, um, I'll start. Are we going to just do one at a time and do like round robin? Or well, that works. Okay. Yeah. We'll, um, go in well the I'll, I'll claim the one that I have to claim, which is Fugitive <laughs> Telemetry from Martha Wells, um, <laughs> since I am the chief preacher of the Church of the Good News of Murderbot. Um, <laughs> yeah, <from these>. So <laughs> I didn't wear my robes today, but um, you know. Uh, and I've actually gotten a chance to read the next installment in the Murderbot Diaries already, and I can tell Ooh. you that it is really, really fun. It's probably my third favorite in the series. Wow. Um, it's uh, basically Murderbot as a detective because there's been a murder on the um, on the station and uh, they are getting in the mix even despite themselves they don't really want to but their human tells them they need to get involved so they do and uh, they yeah anyway it's just really Murderbot is extra snarky in this one I love a murder mystery anyway I love the character it's very fun so I think that's what are your first two favorites um, my favorite is the original All Systems Red. Like, I think that's a, that's like in my top 10 all time favorite books ever. Um, and then the novel from last year, Network Effect, okay. I think is the second best one. I haven't read the, no I've read the four novellas and I haven't read the novel yet. My favorite novella though is the second one. I love the second one. It is. Good. That's probably my fourth favorite. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I think, I think Rogue Protocol was my favorite. The third one? Yeah. See, that's it. Uh, <laughs> She's I, mean, I, don't, I don't dislike any of them. I know they're I, all fun. I, yeah, they're all fun. Um, but this, yeah, I thought this one was really. It was my kind of plot with one of my favorite characters, so it just worked. And that comes out. Let's see. On yeah, April twenty seventh. I, I didn't write the release dates, for, <sighs> but um, I was gonna say Jade and I um, in our like some of our chats, some of our friends all kind of gang up and hate on Murderbot and Jade's like, I like it. Yeah. It's not for everyone. I think the biggest complaint I hear is that it doesn't have enough world building. But to me, I actually think it's a great example of like what a novella can do with world building, which is not you need 600 pages to describe every single part of a society. It's a lot of like, there's no spoon feeding of the world building. It's just sort of there. And there's enough of it to give you a sense of what's going on, but not more. But if you're somebody who likes getting into the fullness of a different world, I don't, I think that this is probably not a series you'll like as much, but this is very character driven. I think for a lot of them, it was just like overhyped. Like so many people were like, it's Fair. amazing. And they read yeah. it and they're like, that's it. Like, I mean, it's just, especially the first four, they're all like novellas. So that's not that yeah. deep. It's not that complex. And it's I also say also, what? I was saying it's not supposed to be like basically right, what exactly. it is is like it's if you love Murderbot as a character, like that's the drive. That's really the the appealing thing. It's like it's yeah. Murderbot. Like if you love the character, you're gonna love the books. If you don't, yes. then you're not. <laughs> like, Isn't right. Jesse May and Allen's thing that like they talk about the TV show too much or something? Oh, like they're like, what, what if you like yeah. to do this? Or, or it's a it right? What it's is also it like? yeah, it's humor too, and like humor is yeah. always subjective. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I yeah. find Murderbot really funny and that TV yeah. stuff very funny, but not everybody like yeah. no. There is no such thing as a book that will work for right. every single person. So right. like, yeah. I I don't see how you couldn't love it, but clear <laughs> I there are clearly people who don't, <laughs> right. and like that's fine. That you and I to be wrong. Like, I totally agree what you're saying about the world building because a lot of times I don't fully grasped like all the like tech stuff, but you just yeah. have to go with it. Like, you just kind of go with it. Like, yep. be like, okay, it is what it says it is. And yeah. just go with it. It's like, you have to do that. It's okay. You, okay, whatever. You do that with sci-fi anyway, a lot yeah. of times. Like yeah. you're like, this I've always said, I hate when uh, some, it's a very small specific kind of sci-fi fan that freaks out. Cause you're like, actually this like, isn't possible. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's fiction. <laughs> yeah. Everybody it's science knows. It's fiction. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's so funny to me though. Cause they're like, well, this wouldn't work because actually the gravity of this. And you're like, yeah, that's it. We all like, we don't need to be really good at math and science to know that this work of fiction is make-believe. Like we can all tell. <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. suspension yeah. of disbelief, it's a thing. Right. And it and not everybody can suspend their dis like people have different kind of barriers right. or things that will break their disbelief. Right. Like yeah. it's just it's subjective. Anyway, all that to say, I love Murderbot. This is a really good entry if you are somebody who also likes Murderbot. I have to say for like sci-fi fantasy stuff, that's my biggest yeah. one for spring. I'm excited about that one. I need to read the the novel first, but Ooh, I'm you've got you've got some art goodness yes. in that one. You'll enjoy it. I know. That's why I love number two. Yeah, art mm -hmm. is so good. Yeah. Um, okay, so I am gonna go with my most anticipated right now is probably uh, I'm looking at the title because I have I, guys. I have serious pregnancy brain. <laughs> like this is a real thing. <laughs> when yeah. I, yes. <laughs> Yeah. I would forget the name of something two seconds after I said it. Yesterday, I was unloading the dishes, and I tried to put dishes in the fridge. The other day, I went to go open the mailbox, and I was trying to put my key in the wrong mailbox because I have, like, a box. It's just – it's really bad. Poor Anyways, um, I'm excited for Rule of Wolves, the second King of Scars book by Lee Bardugo. I'm just a huge Nikolai fan, and I know there were a lot of mixed opinions about the first one, but I happen to be in the camp of enjoying the first one, so I'm excited to see where the rest or the end of the story is going to go, and so yeah, I'm super excited about that one. I read... I liked the first half of King of Scars, and I did not like the second half. But I want to freaking know what happens. I gotta know. Ah, it's a very, it's, it's a very controversial ending. To it. Oh, is it for the second oh, yeah. one? No, no, oh, no, no. The, no. the, the end of the first one is very yes. controversial. Very yeah. controversial. I yeah. like it though. It was like the second half, the whole second half, as soon as that, what is it, part one or part two ends or whatever, and I was like, uh oh, I don't think I'm gonna like where this is going because it gets. And this is a dumb thing to say, but it gets so magical that I feel like it almost starts to kind of change things from before. And anytime you're going to do a continuation, I'm like, leave the past behind. <laughs> like, leave it alone. Yeah. I've accepted it. It's over. Don't change it. So let yeah. the past die. The I just want to remember the first book. So I'm like, do I reread? I need to find like, a <laughs> in-depth summary for it. I love it when they do that in a se like in a sequel they'll have like yeah. previously on as like a first page in the book and I'm like thank that. you yeah, yeah. more books I do that more common yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm gonna <laughs> cut the line the one is gone it's gone <laughs> yeah I'm gonna cut the line just for a second here this book will already be out by the time this video goes up but it technically is a spring release which would be Flamefall which is the sequel to Fireborn oh, yeah. and um, it had the yes. best in book uh summary if you will because you know sometimes they don't do, do a previously on they just have it kind of touched on like oh well it's been so long since this happened or whatever right but it had the most it was so moving and sad the way that it, they tie in the events from before as essentially a reminder but also it hit so hard and I'm like, dang, like I was reading it to my husband, like, wasn't that amazing? It was so good. And he hasn't read Fireborn, but <laughs> it was done so well. But yeah, yeah. I just read Fireborn, like, me too. Ago, and I <laughs> loved it. And I almost said that as like the one that I'm most anticipating, but I know that like Elle can claim that one. So <laughs> oh, I'm very you. excited for Fireborn too. I emailed, I literally emailed Rosaria Munda and told her she gave me a, a tummy ache. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> I told I'm her about like, to start it like tonight, probably. Yeah, because I got so anxious at the end. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I literally was feeling sick and I was like doubled over. Like, oh, oh. did you so get a really copy, Jesse? Yeah. I'm doing the collab with Elle and everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jealous. I, I, yeah, I have a copy of it too for a sponsored video. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Did, you, did you enjoy Fireborn? Yeah, I just read it. I loved it. It was really good. A lot of politics, yeah. which I'm yeah. into. Like, I love the political this. stuff she's exploring. So yes. I think you would like it, Mara. Yeah. In fact, one thing that I kind of geeked out about is at the end, she's got an author's note saying that a lot of the details of the regime were inspired by Plato's Republic. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Alan is happy. Alan her, about that. Yeah. Her inspirations yeah. are like the Odyssey and the Aeneid and the Aeneid um, and Plato's and Republic. She yeah, has a I think a, a degree as political theory from Princeton. 
Yep. So she's like, it's the, and the second one. Oh my gosh. I didn't I want to read the second one. I, I know. know. I didn't think it could get that much better because I liked the first one, obviously, but I loved the first one. And the second one, I was just so I kept turning to my husband being like, oh my gosh, if we were reading next to each other, sorry. And then uh, there was one morning he woke up to go to work and it was like five in the morning and I was reading and he's like, why are you awake? And I was like, fine, I'll go to bed. <laughs> so it's, so, right. oh man. Wow. Is yeah. it a duology or is it like? No, there's, <laughs> there's there will be more. another one. I don't know. Oh <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but um, out, the fact that he, here's what I'll say. Okay, I'm not trying to make social commentary right now, but I know I read both YA and adult. I like the occasional fluffy YA book. I get it. If I'm recommending a YA book and you're not into YA, me saying, "But I swear you'll like this one," probably is not going to convince you. But Alan saying it's basically yeah. the best thing he's read this year so far. And Alan does not like, read YA. He doesn't read YA. Yeah. yeah. Like, but he loved it. So if Alan, Mister, like, <laughs> he doesn't yeah. like people leaning on things, <laughs> like it, then we need to get some kind of merch specific for Alan. Like, we need so good, <laughs> like really Alan, old, because everybody <laughs> loves Alan. You know, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, back to, back to <laughs> release. <laughs> you have a video with him later, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Do, don't I? I can make him wait, he's fine. What's one of your anticipated releases? I'm sorry. What's off. one of yours, your anticipated One release? of mine? So my most anticipated release actually came out like at the very beginning of this month. So oh. that was the... So it like just came out. That was the Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. Yeah, I was interested. Ooh, in that. I'm interested in that. I'm interested and in her as an author. I haven't read any of her books yet. This was, this was my first one. I read an arc of it. It was my first book by her, and now I want to pick up everything. Like, like and you, you need to read the Queens of Renthia because that yeah. second book has the mom and I know. Really like mom <laughs> characters. My, it's my thing. This book has it too because then we're following like old characters, so they're like in their like late 40s so old. <laughs> so but like that's old compared to like what you normally see yeah, right. like we're following 16 year olds but she's yeah. like 16 year old them, gangs yeah we're yeah. following them like 25 years after they saved the world that's mm -hmm. cool and that dealing cool. with the ramifications and how like some of them have ptsd and some of them are like reveling in their fame and some of them are like hiding and like have gone absolutely crazy so mm -hmm. it's just a really cool play on it and i'm like now i want the like i want that prequel book <laughs> like i want the what happened when they were like in their 20s now right that's cool i'm that's excited really that was an anticipated release for me um when i was making them you know before yeah. I started but uh yeah i'm super excited for that one and i've heard like okay things about it so far but you're I loved it. Really I fun. absolutely loved it. I loved the ending. I loved just how it was a standalone too. Which I always like. I, I, like Yay! <laughs> I hate having to wait for the next book. Right? Black Sun. <laughs> yes. I loved Black Sun. Yeah. <laughs> I need the next one. I need something yeah. else from Rebecca <laughs> Roanhorse. I'll take whatever she wants. Like any of her series, if she wants to start a new one, just anything. No, I want the next black then. I, I do too. Very particular about this. Doesn't I think she, she just turned a, it in. Doesn't she have her next middle grade one coming out? Oh. I think she, so. She, okay, so she's got the middle grade with Uncle Rick. Mm -hmm. She's got the mm -hmm. Trail of her, Lightning series, yeah. Sixth World series, which I love. Mm -hmm. Black Sun is going. And then mm -hmm. she's also this year supposed to have a fantasy historical mystery come out. Oh. And it was allegedly going to come out in the spring, but I, there's not been arcs. There's no artwork. Like, I don't think it's actually coming out in the spring. But um, I, so she's just, she's got a lot of irons in the fire. And like, yeah. any, I would take any, like any, huh. yes, I'll take she, whatever she you want to keep going with. She also, I think, had a story in an anthology that I read. Um... Uh, hold on, let me find it. Yeah, I think she's had a few. I think she's been in a couple of anthologies. Oh yeah, in the last a year. universe of a universe of wishes. I read oh. that was a good anthology, and she, and she was in that. She was also in Vampires Never Get Old, which was kind of disappointing, actually. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know about her story, but like the anthology was a little disappointing. But Universe of Wishes was a good anthology, and she has a story in there. Good to know. It was good. Good to yeah. know. All right, Abby. 
our our UK pal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll shout out a UK author uh, that I'm very excited about, uh, The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I mm -hmm. am really excited for his new release, uh, which has like got dragons on it. The cover's really pretty. It's Viking inspired. And actually, Viking inspired this time for people <laughs> like, like Alan that kept saying that Faithful of the Fallen was Vikings and it wasn't. Uh, and it just, I don't know, it sounds so good. I just saw Petrick did a review on it mm -hmm. and I was like, oh. Is yeah, it a new I, series? It's yeah. It's the start of the series. You don't have to read any of his other books to get into it. It's like completely new characters. And yeah. Yeah, no, I got a new arc of it that I'm excited for. I haven't read any John Gwynn, so it might be my first one, or it probably will be my first one, and I'm excited. If uh, if anybody knows this reference, who eventually will watch this video, because obviously we're not live right now, but <laughs> Patrick said it's kind of like God of War, like the video game God of War, inspired by yeah. like in a book, and so if people like God of War, probably yeah. specifically God of War four. Um, then apparently, you know, according to Patrick, it is kind of yeah. similar. So. I was not excited to read it at all. Like I didn't care. I didn't like. I liked Malice, but I didn't love it. But I had like no desire to pick up his new book. And then I watched Patrick's video and I'm like, I need this. <laughs> Patrick is an angel. Anytime right? you write anything, I'm like, okay, I'll get it. Right? I was like, <laughs> I don't really care. Oh my God, I need it. I have Malice on my TBR basically because of him. Um, yeah. So yeah. I haven't started it yet, but. Yeah, I know. Malice. Or, uh, Malice. Yeah. Everything he's written. I love it. Everything. <laughs> Everything. I need to read Malice. Yeah. I'm hoping to read it uh, either. Yeah this month or leading into april sometime i so. liked it a lot you know what's funny though is i think me and alan read it at the same time mm -hmm. and we had opposite opinions on our favorite characters <laughs> <laughs> i love when that happens i've been doing live shows on the faithful and the fallen with a few people and alan actually said he liked the romance in it you know what i think that because he said that he really Wait, liked there's a romance it. Alan said he likes the romance in Fireborn. He said it was his favorite. And I'm like, I think you actually do kind of yes. like romances. You just haven't read a lot that you <laughs> like. <laughs> I think he just likes a slow burn romance where it doesn't take over the plot. Yes. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> like, not going to do that. that. Which is my favorite kind, too. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I feel like the, our, like, friend group slash like world hopper crew they're very all about malice except for like liana yeah she hates it yeah does she hate her copies yeah <laughs> i'm ashamed. i just I assume that me and liana's tastes are like the opposites pretty much like, we <laughs> if she says she likes it but i think i'm not gonna like it because everything i like <laughs> that's what you i was joking the other day uh that shauna and i end up and we're really good friends because we like we live in the same state. We hang out, whatever. Yeah. But we have such different tastes in books. She and I, it'll it's almost baffling. We can read the same thing and be like, "Oh my gosh, I loved it." She's like, "Meh," and then she'll, <laughs> do something and I'm like, "No." <laughs> so. But that can be helpful too. Like I do have people who yeah. I'm like, "Oh, if you like this, I will hate it." So yeah. cool. I'm not gonna Except read that. For <laughs> Rage of Dragons, neither was like that. So sometimes we dislike. Yeah. The Actually, yeah, so, I was, mm, yeah, anyway. I, yeah, I actually just read it for this video and like, I was surprised at how much I liked it. <laughs> like, I'm surprised you liked it too, because you and I tend yeah. to like character driven stuff usually, and I did not find that to be character driven, which is no, why I bailed no. on it. But no. I really, you know what, though? I, I was really interested in the world part of it. The world yeah. is cool. I will give it. So mm -hmm. I think, like, I think that element of it, like, the magic in the world and the politics stuff, like, carried it for me. And I like a revenge plot. So, like, I, I liked, yeah, I like, I didn't know if I was going to like it, but I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. I just don't like Tao. He is so dumb. Mm -hmm. I fell pretty firmly in the middle on, I was like, it's okay. I don't really want to read the second book. Now I'm just thinking about yeah. Alex because Alex is like, you guys always find a way to hate <laughs> 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 In like half our videos, somehow. Yeah. Like, Bethany's <laughs> defending it, Alex. It's okay. We've got. Alex, it's so funny. You, it's okay. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, Tom was fine. He was like, I was like, okay, this feels like you the know. Uh, he was. <laughs> he was. Like, he was the like a, I mean, he's like a normal teenage boy. Like he's he's a teenage boy. That's what he is. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. I, you know, I normally like some insta love, but to me, that was like the it most was. egregious version of insta love ever. 
that was something that bothered me too because i love a romance like i like a faded mate trope Wait, where it's like you just look part- at each other Oh, oh, see, I hate that. How, he just has this lady. I, when I was reading it anyway, oh. it seemed like he had something going I, no, on. Like, what's her no, 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 no. They had, like, known each other happen. all growing up. But we didn't uh, see it at all. Like, so, it didn't... I didn't yeah, but you get, that, like, in the introduction, it talks about it. Like, they'd known each other forever, and he'd had feelings for her, and then finally <laughs> did something about it. That was the whole setup. <laughs> I I'm gonna, no <laughs> maybe I just missed that. Him. I really want us to get back on track. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Bethany, what's your what's your <laughs> you know, the dog attack? <laughs> I know. She let out um, the status little like oh so. mine's just laying beside me. Okay, so since we're kind of going with like the fantasy sci-fi stuff, I one I'm excited for that's coming out in May is a YA release called In the Ravenous Dark by AM Strickland. Yes. So they wrote Beyond the Black Door, which I really, I like really thing. loved. And oh. I think it's interesting. So this one, it says it's a pansexual blood mage reluctantly teams up with an undead spirit to start a rebellion amongst the living and the dead. It's like a dark YA fantasy. And based on how oh. much I liked their last book, I'm very excited for this Ooh, one. That sounds so good. I was looking that up the other day, actually. And I was like, this is going on my list to pick up. Like, Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be good that's one of those I, uh, descriptions you hear and you're just like yeah okay that's it's like <laughs> sold like, cool. I don't <laughs> cool. yeah um so this one, i'm not a big um sci-fi person i usually read you know fantasy but this one called machine hood have you guys oh, yeah. heard of that one yeah. okay I, yeah i copied the um like little synopsis i found on you know there's lots of blogs and stuff that have uh mm-hmm. anticipated releases and so i kind of stuck that over here but it says um zero dark 30 meets the social network in the science fiction thriller about artificial intelligence sentience and labor rights in a near future dominated by the gig economy okay uh, that's interesting yeah. Yeah. Just social interesting. network meets zero dark 30 i'm trying to wrap my head but around yeah. those two references no. together and yeah. it's a science fiction thriller i don't know i just feel like it sounds it sounds cool Um, no there aren't too many this particular season that are coming out that are releases um as far as like sequels or things like that really big ones it's a lot of this sounds interesting we'll see kind of yeah so yeah (laughs) that was one of them um i'll because it was quick I'll, i'll name another one um so this one says, uh, The Helm of Midnight. Have you guys heard of that one? Mm-hmm. It, says, oh, a legendary, it says, A legendary serial killer stalks the streets of a fantastical city in The Helm of Midnight, the stunning first novel in a new trilogy by uh, acclaimed author Marina uh, Lostetter. Oh. oh, I think I got an email about that one. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I hadn't decided to know what I wanted to say, but it sounds interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. No, it sounded cool. Yeah. There are like you said, like a bunch of like first books or like new mm-hmm. series coming out right now. Yeah. yeah. I'm a sucker for a high premise. Like if the premise yeah. is just cool, it, and yeah. I especially if it's like a start of a series or a standalone, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, okay, I'll I'll All try right, that. Yeah. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah. I just think that this is kind of a almost an off year for big name releases. Yeah. I feel like it's a weird year for releases. I assume it's because of COVID and how that impacted different, like what happened, what actually ended up coming out last year versus things that got pushed into this year. And I think maybe oh, that yeah. like moved schedules oh, around. Cause I just, it feels like kind of a weird yeah. year for releases. Yeah. I don't know. It does. Yeah. There's and a I- lot more happening like summer and fall. It looks oh, like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. We'll reconvene then too. But <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I'm coming out like in June that I'm really excited yeah. about, and it's like you want to just say them really quick. Um, like she who like, became the sun is the yeah. one I'm super yeah. excited yeah. about. I really want to read that too. I have a couple of um, the uh, author who wrote Spin the Dawn, which a lot of people didn't like. I think because it ended up being that. more, it was more of a romance than people were expecting. No. But sounds great. Uh, yeah. I liked yeah. I liked that duology. I thought it was really sweet. I don't know. I thought it was cozy. But um, she's got the Descendant of the Crane. No, no, that's the Joan He one. It's the Six Crimson Cranes. 
coming yeah. out. The one with that gorgeous that UK pretty cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. Abby, you guys get all the good covers. I'm good so covers. jealous. I, Our I, covers I, suck. I literally did a video on 2021 release of UK versus US. Yeah, <laughs> focusing on the releases that are coming out because I was yeah. like, so well, the UK is doing so well. <laughs> There's also yeah. another uh, YA one, the last book in the Crown of Feathers trilogy. Um, yeah. by yes. I'm, excited about that <laughs> I'm so excited for that one. Yeah, people like Animal Companion type mythological creature things the phoenix is yeah. that series definitely for sure I've got, a, I've got a couple june ones that i had got for, gotten from tour.com that look interesting so i've got the chosen yes, and the beautiful I I oh yeah yeah so this is like a retelling of the great gatsby but oh. it, with magic and an asian heroine so that's cool and then the other one that's coming out in june that i'm like really curious about is Star Eater by yes, Kristen Paul. Yes, that sounds so cool. Yeah, like weird, but cool. It's like a dark sci-fi. It's like a sci-fi fantasy thing, but it's got um, cannibalism in it, like cannibal magic. Yeah. Which is, Ooh. and it's very I feel like that's going to be one of those books that people give negative ratings to because they're like, yeah. this is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Probably, but it sounds so cool. It's going to be like, it's probably going to be a polarizing one, but I'm like, it sounds, it sounds interesting. So we'll see. There was um, one coming out in April that sounded really cool that I haven't heard anyone really talk about. And it's Light of the Midnight Stars. Yes, I thought that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like Jewish folklore. It's like yeah. the descendants of King Solomon have magic. And I'm like, sold. That's all I need to know. I'm dead. That's why I had that one. Yeah, I requested yeah. it and they like never did it. It's like, I want it. Yeah. And I mean, the color is also really pretty. It right. is beautiful. Well, speaking of a, a pretty US cover, um, the yes. Fire Firekeeper's Daughter, I haven't read this so yet, good. but it just came out and it's YA. Fantasy mystery is kind of what it sounds it's like. Not fantasy. Not fantasy at all. At all? No. no. Ghost mystery. It's like a crime thriller mystery, but a slower pace. It's not paced like a thriller, but it's more of a crime. Oh, okay. I thought that there was it's like really a fantasy good, element. Okay. Well, I, there was I love this cover. I think it's no. beautiful, and I love a YA mystery. So, and it's pretty. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's intended. YA is mysteries. Anybody excited for the Forest of Stolen Girls by June Her? So that's the I author. Didn't even heard of it. uh, it's the author of *The Silence of Bones*, which I haven't read, but I want to. I don't know if anybody else read that. But was that the? Was it set in Korea? Yeah. So okay. this is also set in Korea. So she has like this oh, thing where she's writing yeah. historical like mysteries set in like historical Korea, um, which I think is really cool. And I'm I'm half Korean, so I'm like super interested in it. Uh, I haven't read Silence of Bones. I really want to, but I just, I love the idea behind her books where I think they, um, they, I think this one might be based on something that really happened. I could be off base about that. Uh, but yeah, it's about, um, so the little first sentence of the synopsis, after her father vanishes while investigating the disappearance of 13 young women, a teen returns to her secretive hometown to pick up the trail in the second YA historical mystery from the author of *The Silence of Bones*. Ooh. So I think it sounds really good. Um, but yeah, *Forest of Stolen Girls* by June Her. I'm excited about that one, and that one comes out April 20th. Nice, awesome. I feel like March had a lot of good ones. There was yeah. a lot of big releases, I think, in March. <laughs> there are a lot of big, uh, yeah. Uh, these first three months, I feel like spring is just the down month or down, yeah, the down season yeah. for releases because summer people are going to be reading more because they're not at school and then fall and winter are kind of like the holiday season plus mm -hmm. i feel like people like atmospheric things and so that's why you always see fall reading recommendations you don't really see like i don't see spring reading recommendations as often for fantasy readers no yeah so i think that that makes sense for that and then spring is just like well yeah. you know, <laughs> there is one really good sequel that's coming out um, in May. Let me check the date here real quick. On the 11th of May is A Master of Jen by P. Jelly Clark. Oh, yeah. And I Wait, really... I about this. I read uh, the first novella last night, and I'm midway through the second one, and it's so good. It's so good, right? What's yeah. the first one in that series? Okay. A dead, a dead Jen in Cairo. Cairo. A dead Jen in Cairo is the first one. The okay. second one is the haunting of Tram zero one five. I think is yeah, what it's Tram called. Zero one five. Was part of a series. I got an e arc of that, but I haven't read those two, so I better make sure. I read them. They're, they're very, very short. They're very, they're very short. short. 
their like true mystery plots, which is fun. Like they have a very um, golden age detective fiction kind of feel to the mystery plots, which I like, but it's also set in historical fantasy Cairo. And our main character is a queer dandy detective. <clears throat> and I mean, it's, I just, it's fun. I love the like the combination of the historical Cairo setting yes. with the yeah. like the gin and the magic and the different like fantastical creatures that are mixed into it. Just I just, yeah. I just heard so much good things about P. Jolly Clark, and I haven't read any of their He's stuff. An He's an auto buy for me now. Really I, yeah. I've loved every single thing I've picked up from him. He's such a dense storyteller with his novellas like his world building is so dense his thematic content is awesome his characters are super memorable i will say you can feel in a master of gin that it's his first full novel like i don't know structurally that it's as successful as i'd hoped it would be if he i think it would have been better if it had been interconnected novellas it would have flowed a little bit better, mm -hmm. I think. But it's still just like the character work is so good. It's such a lush, interesting setting. The magic is cool. There's a queer love story. Oh. If you like um, like Jim Butcher or Kate Daniels, I think that like the Dresden Files or Kate Daniel, I think if you were willing to go with like a historical version of that kind of vibe, you would like this series. It's really, really good. Cool. I think it's really bad vibes like the city of brass because that had the similar setting. oh yeah i was oh, just I gonna, I was gonna ask i was oh. gonna ask it sounded like it but city of brass i nahri was kind of annoying <laughs> i'm actually picking oh, that third abby's heart I, I mean i love the days of brass i love it too Aww. i love that series so no much. i think the series is really <laughs> popular i think al has a bit of an unpopular opinion i do <laughs> i didn't so <sighs> Well, we don't need to get into it. That's not what this is really was. Another Rage of Dragons side tangent. Yeah. But, um, right. Elle, uh, did you know that Joan He has another book coming out? I know mm -hmm. you really like Descendants of, Cr of the Crane. Yeah, so that one's on my list too. The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan mm -hmm. He. It's supposed to be a mix of We Were Liars meets Black Mirror, which Ooh. sounds really good. I love Black Mirror. Anytime you pitch something as being like Black Mirror, I want to pick it up. Yeah, and it's about like two sisters or something. It's a sci-fi actually, instead of fantasy. So, um, and the cover is gorgeous. I'm so, really excited that one too. I don't love that cover actually. I know you really? like it. Yeah. It's a little weird. It it's is weird. weird, but I think that fits weird. with like being a the weird vibe. book probably. Yeah. 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 With the Black Mirror so, twist. Another um, YA one that I don't know, I'm kind of excited for is um, Blade of Secrets. Do you oh. guys know this one? It's uh, by Trisha Levenseller, and oh, it yeah, says yeah. that it's the first in a duology about a teenage blacksmith with social anxiety who is forced to go on the run to protect the world from the most powerful magical sword she's ever made. And it's like, Ooh. I don't know if you guys have read any Trisha Levenseller. I've only read mm -hmm. two. I read um, the, the Shadows Between Us, which was ridiculous, and I thought it was <laughs> You guys have read this with that one? I haven't no, read that one. I think it's did. Mara, I, I feel like you would like it. It's this girl who she, It's ridiculous, Mara, you would love no, it. No, no. Okay, tell me tell me this yeah. plot does not sound entertaining to you. So this girl wants to like essentially seduce the king and get him to, he's like hunksicle man, of course, but she wants to seduce him to get him to marry her. And then she's planning after that happens to kill him so that she can just take his power. And oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I it's like so that. ridiculous. It's so <laughs> over the top. And like the book opens up with her talking about how this guy that she was um, with or whatever, that he kind of was like a little bit of a tool. So she murdered him. <laughs> Like, and she's like, I hope nobody finds his body or whatever. I don't know. But okay. um, so it's like really ridiculous and over the top. Um, it was funny because some people were like, I thought that she would be redeeming. And I'm like, yeah, I was hoping she wouldn't be like, I was wanting this kind of wicked. <laughs> like, and it's, it's not um, so dark the way something like Prince of Thorns, obviously, it's a YA fantasy. It's not dark yeah. like that. It's just like, Kind of like cheeky violence, if that makes sense. It sounds campy. I kind of like that. Yeah, and then she also wrote um, the Warrior of the Wild, which is kind of like it's honestly okay. a fantasy Viking esque story. There's really yeah. no magic in it at all. But she, sorry, my dog is. She, Hi, senior. I can see. Hi. Um, she keeps whimpering, but uh, <laughs> that one it was so cute. It was like precious. The this girl is cast out 
by her village and then she finds these two boys that are living in the wilderness because they've been cast out of their villages and they like band together the only way they can be accepted back into their villages if they complete this essentially impossible task and they each have their own tasks so they band together to help each other and um one of the guys is uh like he's got a lover back home who is a fella and i was like okay so we have a viking inspired but this is like normal for them, which I think was mm-hmm. really cool. And then the other guy is like just kind of instantly cute and like flirty and wholesome with her. And she's like, I'm not interested. But like, <laughs> they're so cute. They're a little, it was, it's fluffy. It was so fluffy. So That's I'm like, awesome. I have my daughter, the pirate king or siren. There's a sequel to that too. I haven't yeah. read that one. I think that one I've heard is more almost middle grade. Um, it's not middle grade, but I didn't like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have a good idea by her. Like, what was that? I, I've been hesitant to try something else by her. Maybe I should. I've been on the fence about it, but because I read Daughter of the Pirate King and did not like it. Yeah, well, Bethany, you don't like boat stories, right? Yeah, but it wasn't, wasn't that. It. Like the heroine was really irritating. I thought, mm. and like I didn't. I did. I, there were a lot of things I didn't I've like heard, about it. it wasn't the I've boat heard part. not amazing things about that one. So yeah. I was a little, but I, I decided to try the other one and I was like, this was funny. And then Warrior of the Wild was so else cute. Better. I was not expecting Warrior of the Wild to be so precious. So now I'm like, okay, well, you've, I, anytime I'm in the mood for something just like straight up entertaining, you know, I'll probably uh, gravitate towards her. But I also, you guys already talked about it. The Light of the Midnight Stars was one. Mm. That one, I'm just thinking, is it going to be like um, spinning silver a little bit? Because Naomi Novik also kind of tied yeah. The, um, yeah. the element into the story, which I thought was so good. Um, well, if you like, well, her um, debut was Sisters of the Winter Wood, which was also oh. like Jewish folklore stuff. And I loved mm. it. I thought it was really beautiful. So, yeah. yeah I was going to say another one that just came out at the beginning of March was Burning Girls and Other Stories by Veronica mm-hmm. Chanoz. And it's very experimental, speculative short stories that is pretty based in Jewish folk magic um, and like feminism. Um, so if you're looking for something a little like more on the literary side and a little more like weird, <laughs> uh, those were, I thought, really well done short stories. Did you, um, did you read Spinning Silver? No, I didn't have, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a complicated feeling about Naomi Novik. I'm I, not sure I want to read more from her. I've, I'm kind of divided. Oh, really? Is it because of her or her book? <sighs> no, just Uprooted. I liked parts of it. I hated it. So if that makes <laughs> you feel better. Well, I <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then I, a lot of people, I mentioned I was going to read her, um, I was going to try her Dragon series. Temporary. And then I got a lot of feedback from people about like, kind of the like colonial colonialism being a little problematic in that oh. and i don't know so i just am kind of i feel ambivalent towards her at this point mm. i'm not I sure did, she's a i haven't read temerary in a long time the dragon is adorable though it's like well, it's I love dragons. yeah i well, love dragons i mean, I mean not trying fun. to discredit anybody because it's been a long time and maybe if i were to pick it back up i would be like oh shoot yeah i, I see what you're saying but mm. it's supposed to be like modified historical fiction yeah so not saying like it's totally fine it's no big deal yeah. you know like you can have yeah. any feelings toward it but that's i mean i think maybe she was trying to show i don't know it's been a long time so i should probably just yeah. shut my mouth. i read the first three tim rear books when i was like in my early 20s and mm-hmm. what i remember is really loving the relationship between the dragon and the main character and i also like that it was like kind of like the napoleonic wars but mm-hmm. with dragons um, I just thought it was really interesting, but it's been a long time since I've read them, so I don't know. I, I, I mean, mythology. I really, I'm really excited for the Indian-inspired uh, "The Jasmine Throne" by Tasha. Yeah, Kirsten. yes, Ooh. yeah. Which, that's that's on my list too. Um, Indian-inspired yeah, story too. where you have like the princess and her handmaiden, and they're trying to overthrow the princess's dictator, who's dictator brother, and like their relationship. And I, I'm, I mean, I love like that sort of dynamic. So, and I really yeah. enjoyed her first duology so yeah uh, i hope so. that awesome. one looks really good Tasha Suri by the author of empire of sand oh yeah yeah i have empire yeah. of sand i keep meaning to get to that I yeah i haven't read it either but a lot of people really like empire of sand or the duology so i'm definitely intrigued by her new release yeah, yeah. empire of sand is like oh it's so good like one of the is best slow burn romances with a marriage of convenience like forced marriage yeah, yeah. i know i'm gonna love so it good. i just I'm need to get yeah, yeah. I need to read that. 
um, it had like the mentor trope, and you're like, and they were just so adorable. And it sounds like it's a I, lot of things I would like. Yeah. yeah, I had so many feelings for the couple at the end. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> just like, because they're both forced into a political marriage that they don't want, and it's like a bad situation, and they become friends, and then they end up falling in love, and like, it's so good. <laughs> That sounds and amazing. I love the Indian mythology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. enough Indian mythology stories in fiction, yeah. unless it's just me not seeking them out enough. Right. I feel like there's anybody... more of them getting hyped these days too, so it's easier to find them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's yeah. another one. Elle, aren't you reading something soon that's Indian inspired fantasy? Oh yeah, isn't that yeah, upon a burning good. throne? Is I that have that one too. Yeah. That one has horrendous ratings. Really? Oh, so I, I have that one back there. Yeah, Starla from Starla Reads loves it, and she sold the hell out of it, so I picked it up just because <laughs> she loved it so much, and she convinced me with her passion. I'll look it up. I'm pretty See, sure it's I like... Oh, I was convinced by her passion, and then I saw the good yeah. news, and I was like, ooh, what's going I on? Know. I'm very I, curious what you guys are going to think of that one. I think yeah, it's got a lot of... Um, almost like folklore, and you know, folklore can get weird. Yeah. Uh, I guess the meaning like you know even Greek Roman all that stuff oh like, yeah and then their daughter and you're like wait a second aren't they brother and sister that's what I love about the Percy oh, Jackson yeah. series is that they just normalize like polygamy for a middle grade <laughs> book of just like yeah this is an entire cabin of half brothers and sisters because so, you know, our parents be getting it on all the time right. like, all these models, <laughs> like, it's like oh okay so there's um only 420 ratings so not many oh. ratings at all. Oh, and the yeah. average rating is 3.36 Ooh. So it goes, uh, it's like a perfect, you know, five, four, three, two, one, as far as like how many. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. So it's oh, one okay. you either love or hate, maybe. Hate. Okay. Well, okay. A, lot of, such a, title. a lot of like totally in the, in the middle, but yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that is one that I'm hoping to pick up, but um, a couple other uh, anticipated releases though. Um, I, I, Forgot to double check the date, but Son of the Storm is one. It's the one that's got oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hybrid cover. That looks really cool. The cover is beautiful. That cover is so pretty. Anybody that doesn't know what it is, I'll yeah. read the um, the little synopsis here. It says, a young scholar's ambition threatens to reshape an empire determined to retain its might in this epic tale of violent conquests, buried oh. histories, and forbidden magic. So there's that one. Yeah. And then um, Witches Steeped in Gold. Oh yeah, yeah. that yeah. cover looks cool. Nice. too. Oh, that cover looks really cool, but yeah. um, oh shoot, I don't have the. Um, <gasps> it's like a healer, right? Yeah, I want to say, is it like Jamaican? Like, yeah, I think it is Jamaican inspired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me see. see. This Jamaican inspired fantasy debut about two enemy witches who must enter into a deadly alliance to take down a common enemy has the twisted cat and mouse of Killing Eve. With the richly imagined fantasy world of Fury Born and Ember in the Ashes. Sounds oh. fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That sounded really good to me, too. That one's on my list. Yeah. That one comes out April 20th. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. in June, Marjorie Liu, who writes the Monstrous yes. series, she has a short story collection coming out called The Tangle Root Palace. And, and this cover, beautiful. the cover is stunning. Is worth the price of admission. I haven't read so it, but pretty. I'm buying it purely for the cover, <laughs> and also because I love her and Monstrous. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you? Um, I know we mentioned this earlier, but uh, have you seen the UK cover for um, Six Crimson Cranes? It's so pretty, so Mara. Have you, Bethany? No. Mm -hmm. Oh. Look it, it up. Really okay. <laughs> it's it's so, so pretty. The reason I, Mara, really the, and I brought this back up was because um, Jesse May, not you know this Jesse, <laughs> but um, Jesse May messaged me and she was like, "I've never pre-ordered. It's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. like, I've never pre-ordered something that I'd like. The only time she's pre-ordered something really is Rhythm of War, but she's like, I pre-ordered that when I saw that cover. That is um, wait, beautiful. which which one is the um the UK versus the US? I can't tell. The US one oh, is her face really up close. Oh, see, I like the U.S. one better. I actually like both of them. I know. I want them both. I, I like pre -ordered. the U.S. one. <laughs> <laughs> I liked her other series, her other duology. So, plus, she seems like a really nice lady. Yeah. You know, I like, like the right. Yeah. 
I try to, you know, I try as much as possible to separate her from artists, but I'm like, she seems so nice. When I read <laughs> the Spin the Dawn duology and then I was like, you know, reading the little author thing, she went to something where she, she may have gone to Juilliard for like composite, musical composition or something. And I'm like, um, what? I don't know. Just what's up with these crazy smart authors? I love uh, it. I yeah. think it's great. But, you know, they write, they write YA, so there's just a bunch of dumb <laughs> That's my favorite. I actually have wanted to make a video about all the dumb YA authors and just talk about like this one did like Cat Cho did like cancer research for ten years. Yeah, or something. yeah. And just like uh, like I said, Rosario Monday. I think Princeton yeah. for political theory and yeah. then, like all these that I'm like, yeah, they're just so dumb. So dumb. I've <laughs> thought about doing that for romance authors actually because there's a lot who are like lawyers and doctors. Yeah, and, like, half of romance land are lawyers. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of lawyers. Do um, they write romance like lawyer plots? No, but no. I think what what happens is they get burned. There's a what I've noticed in romance authors is that there's a lot of women who had what we might describe as like high powered careers who got burned out on their high powered careers, mm -hmm. and this is their second career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Isn't there All one? Right, that, guys, um, I have to go. Without. Yes. Thank okay. you for having okay. us. Bye, Bye Jesse. Yay! Bye, Jesse. Thanks. <laughs> have fun. Go, go beat Alan at trivia. Yes, do it. <laughs> I, I have to be the. Actually, I'll be going up against Abby if I win, right? Yeah. <laughs> Abby's like, bring it on. Come, come. Good luck. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So the um, I don't know. I just I, I I've heard that uh, I think Jess Owens talked about. There's a romance author who's a politician or something. Stacey yeah. Abrams. Stacey Abrams. Yeah, she's written like romantic suspense in the past. Well, I didn't know she's written anything. I know I've like heard of hers. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. She, she wrote right under. So, is it like Selena, Selena Montgomery or Serena yeah. Montgomery? I think it's Selena, Selena Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to get a copy I, of them these days because yeah, you can get them. The, some of the audiobooks are like on script. I actually I did one on audio from my library and it was pretty good. It was interesting. Yeah. So, Courtney Milan yeah. was a um, Supreme Court clerk. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of smart ladies. Yeah. So speaking I want to, I was going to say, speaking of romance, I did want to throw my, my favorite romance read so far um, for the spring oh, is um, the intimacy experiment by Rosie Dannon. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just really love, I, <laughs> there were moments in the plot that I thought didn't flow as nicely as I would have wanted. So I didn't give it like a full four and a half or five, but like, the sensibilities of this one are just so modern. It's so sex positive. It's um, got religion integrated in an interesting way because the hero is a rabbi and he's bringing in this woman who is a former sex worker who now has her own like sex toy line um, and like educational empire to come to uh, like talks at his synagogue. So there's a lot of really interesting conversations about like the place of religion in modern life. And it's just, I thought it was a really, it felt like a very modern version of a romance. So for people who yeah. don't like some of the more like kind of fluffier versions of a romance, if you're looking for something a little more, I don't know, hard hitting, not really, but like just not as, I guess, kind of just fluffy. I thought that that was an interesting, interesting I book. have to ask really quick, sorry. But um, I know a couple in, uh, you know, in the group, the backgrounds will make this, more. Have you seen that pastor who was like talking about Woo! staying hot for their yep. husbands? Oh my god! Bethany, did you see Wait, this? Wait, what? No. Homeboy gave an entire sermon about how um, men need trophy wives. So women, you need to make sure that you're staying hot for your husband. Oh. And it was in the year 2021. Yes, and he also, I mean, I don't want to body shame anybody, but he was body shaming women and then the internet clapped back at him and they were like, sir, thou art a russet potato. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, look, yeah, I mean, I, I wish like, I could say I find that shocking. Oh, it was not surprising. Christianity, but I do not find that he's like shocking holding remotely. The Bible. He's holding the Bible while he's saying all these things as if somehow yeah. it says, 
And he talks about how his Deuteronomy start- 2022, 20, thou shalt maintain thy smoking hot bod for right, he thine talks about husband. How his <laughs> wife, you know, he's like, she gained weight when she would get pregnant and have kids, but you know, she went to Weight Watchers and I was just like, what is happening? And he's like, can I get an amen? And I'm like, no. You and you could hear the audience being me. like, amen. <laughs> it was I like really a, awkward. Well, Experience you know what though? Theory. I I have I have been at oh, sermons like that. I have too. like before. It's just that like the the era of the internet and social media means that people have more access to it. Like I, that's not it's easy. not new. I have, I have a theory that his wife has been like stuck in this terrible marriage to this man. Don't you feel awful for him. And I was like, her? I wonder if she was like, Yeah, honey, your sermon is great. So that he would like expose himself for the awful husband that he is. But I don't I oof. mean probably also, not because I, I mean, know sadly a lot, she of, believes sadly, a lot of women like believe it. Like they think it is their responsibility. Really? Like that's you not goes, oh yeah. You yeah, yeah as far as to quote that passage about you know wives like submit like, to your husbands. Yeah and like yep. husbands like lay your life down as you would for the first thing. And, like, he even says if she's not in the mood, just show her this verse. Put it on your headboard. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. The amount of, like, marital rape, basically, that goes on in the name of Jesus and evangelicalism is uh, pretty appalling. Um, 100%. That none of, it was not it was a particularly naked version of what goes on all the time in those churches, but it was I, not surprising I, to me. One of those things that it's like so terrible that you just kind of have to laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and just be like, well, yeah. this guy, okay. So, I mean, but, we could yeah. get into an entire tangent on the sex education I received at fundamentalist evangelical school, but it largely consisted of being told, I, uh, for instance, I, if you had been assaulted as a child, that you were no longer pure and needed to. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah it was um, awful. I, my favorite comedian, though, him and his wife have a podcast. She's also a comedian, so you know. But um, he was, she was like, "Oh yeah, is this in the Bible?" And he's like, "It's, it's how you interpret it." Like, <laughs> of it all. <laughs> like you just have to really look for it. It is there. Yeah, yeah. wives stay hot for your husbands. Mara and I have had a lot of similar experiences growing up. So yeah, like none of yeah. this is shocking to me, sadly. But like, but it's. And I mean, the, like, I, I mean, I kind of grew up where the subtext of what's taught to women is a lot of the, it's, it's a whole thing. You can it's, do a whole live stream. I've been it, in but. therapy for my entire adult life, <laughs> processing all so, the, all so the things have, my eyes done seen in that environment. That romance book of yours, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, that's part of why I liked it. Cause it's like, I wish I would have, you know, like those are the kinds of messages. Yeah. I wish that 16 year old Mara had been hearing about sex Instead yep. of like your body is shameful and dirty and like you shouldn't do anything with it until you get married and then you have to magically become like a sex robot for your husband. Like, yeah, yeah I would have loved to hear these messages more. Yeah, um, that was part, probably part of why I liked it so much too because I I read it also and it's I I agree like I think it does a good job of suggesting like okay how can we have like a positive version of religion in the modern day that's like inclusive and it's like. It's, yeah. Abby, saying, Abby? Yeah. Of, of like romance books as well. Well, like a fantasy romance that I'm excited for is A Crown of Gilded Bones, the third one in the From Blood and Ash series, oh, which yeah. I've really liked and found really fun. I know that it's not for everyone as it probably has too much leaning in it, but <laughs> I find them I find them really, really fun. Um, and like a blend of fantasy and romance. And uh, yeah, after the, there was quite a cliffhanger at the end of the second one. So I'm very excited for the third I was one. So, and then, yeah. I just, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I was so amused that the second one is the book that Alan got me for my birthday. I was like, Alan, do you know what this is? <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, yeah, and then the other one is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily. I Henry. just read that. Oh, Did I thought like not. I haven't read it yet, but it's... It, oh. You'll like, like it. It's good. Um, women t- that always go on holiday with each other every year, and then they miss a year, and then they come back, and they've got to rebuild their friendship. That's, that's what I've got from the plot summary. It's... Yeah, it's like a, a really very pining, intense friends to lovers story. And basically the reason they missed the last one is that they tried to go from friends to lovers the time before and it didn't go well. Mm-hmm. So now 
Anyway, it's beautifully written. I love Emily Henry's writing. If you love her writing, you'll, yeah. It's a very, I don't want to spoil anything. I wish she had done a couple of things differently that kept me from fully loving it, but I think you'll really, if, did you read Beach Read? Yeah. If you, if you like, it. yeah, if you like that, you'll, I think you'll enjoy it because it's the same, like, really good writing. Are there any thrillers or anything um, besides the kind of romance, fantasy, sci-fi? Yeah. I, so I want to, like, can I recommend, like, my favorite romance I've read so far? And then also that's coming out in a couple yeah. days. And then I do have a thriller also that looks interesting. But um, it's an underappreciated series that I've been trying to get people to read. But this is my favorite book of them so far. Uh, Careless Whispers by Cynthia Williams. It's this, like, kind of soapy contemporary romance series following an elite Black family in the South that has lots of, like, family drama, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been waiting for this third book, and it's so good. So if you like prickly heroines and like a kind of uh, rivals to lovers trope, this one is fantastic. It's really, really good. Um, so that, that's that been really fun. It's like, And then I ha there's a YA thriller coming out in uh, June that looks really interesting. It's called You're So Dead by Ash Parsons. It's a, it says it's an Agatha Christie inspired YA thriller comedy about three best friends who sneak into an influencers only festival event gone wrong, like the fire festival, only to discover there's a killer in their midst. Dun, dun, dun. So it sounds. Was cool. it, uh, Mara, was it you and, was it the other day that you were saying, who was saying that YA books should just not be thrillers? Was that you? Like that there's only so much you can do. No, Alexa was just saying that there's only like, things you can sell right now in the market for YA oh, thriller, right. there's specific tropes. But my counter to that is that's the same in adult. It's just different ones that are dominating for thriller. So um, yeah, my, my thriller pick would be Every Last Fear from Alex Finlay with the caveat that people have rightly pointed out that there is some stereotyping of Mexican characters in this book that is not... I, I still can recommend it because it is, I don't think a major part of the book at all. I just wish it hadn't been there. So just know that going in, but this is a very paid, like can't put it down page turnery kind of like conspiracy type thing. And it has like a, um, a Netflix documentary, true crime uh, kind of backstory where our main character's older brother was convicted of killing his high school girlfriend. But now there's like these new, you know, docu-series saying like, maybe he didn't do it. So their family has kind of got notoriety from that. Um, and then the rest of his family dies while they're on vacation in Mexico. And so it's like, were they killed? Was it an accident? Did his brother really do it? Like what's going on? Um, and it's like one of those, you just can't put down kind of a thing. So what, uh, do you mind me asking what the stereotypes were? It's just the, um, the Mexican officials we encounter are all corrupt. Um, so I've had some, like, I want to bring it up cause I know it does bother some people. I've had other viewers of mine who are of Mexican descent say, well, I don't think that that's necessarily inaccurate. So like, I don't want to invalidate people's feelings either way, right, right. but I just want to raise it that I know it does bother. It, it bothers right. some readers. And I think that that's completely valid based on what I read. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. But what if you want something, you just can't put in. Oh, sorry. What do people think about like *Hail Mary*, the new Andy Weir book? Oh, Girls I've not. Martin. I've not even heard about yeah. that one. I've been out of the loop there. I mean, I, I can't. I'm not too sure on so much about it. Just that I it, I enjoyed *The Martian*. I wasn't too fast on *Artemis*, but he's got his new book, *Project Hail Mary*, which comes out in May. Yeah, I did not like *Artemis*, um, but I never read *The Martian*, so I feel like I missed his good I've one. Heard I, I feel like, well, Jesse May loves that one, as do a lot of people. I mean, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. He's gone back to a male protagonist, so I feel like that might be Maybe that'll better. be better. <laughs> was, the Ar was Artemis frustrating because he didn't write a woman well or something? Or was it just, oh, uh, I see Dave nodding. I mean, yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I, I, haven't heard. Heard. That's what I heard, too. It's not uh, like the worst version of I've, I've ever seen. I just thought it was overall a pretty, like, inert book. Like, it was just sort of like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Like, I if, if that is what The Martian was like, I'm very confused why he's popular. But I've heard The Martian is a lot the better, Martian so. Is better than the Artemis. 
yeah. Um, so Artemis is such I'm a cool name, though. Next. Do you know yeah. what the synopsis for Hail Mary is? Um, I, from memory, it's about this guy that's gone off into space and I think he's been like abandoned or something or no maybe 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 I'm getting it mixed up with something else is that the um, Martian <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's the Martian uh, part two the Martian part two <laughs> yeah. he's like, I'll me, go back to what I'll go back to what people liked for me <laughs> I'll leave, yeah, leave these women up. alone and just oh, gonna go back okay. okay so Ryland Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission and if he fails humanity and earth itself will perish Except that right now he doesn't know that. He can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time and he's been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home with nothing but two corpses for company. And then it, it keeps going. Oh. I do like the amnesia trope. That sounds interesting. I was going to say, I, mean, a, I know I haven't read it, but Jade likes dark matter. Isn't that kind of the, like, what the heck is happening? This isn't my... It's not amnesia, but it's yeah, kind of like, amnesia, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like, a, I don't know what's going on. Oh, Jane, have you read The Bone Shard Daughter? No. Oh, you. you need to read that. So that's not, the sequel's not coming out in spring, but I believe it's coming out in November, unless I'm mixing it up with another one. But ta okay. That well, hasn't, you like that one, right? I did like it. I like, I think it's a pretty good debut. It wasn't perfect, but I thought it was really interesting. Like the world yeah. she creates and I liked some of the characters. Like it was, I yeah, it was felt like a little bit, I don't know if Bethany can feel this way. I feel like it pulled a tiny bit from horror in some aspects, like toward the, <sighs> the end, some of the like reveals and stuff were creepy. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. It's definitely like goes a little bit darker. Um, if you but... also um, like for readers that picture things as they're reading, the there's these things called constructs, which are pieced together uh, creatures, and one of them is like a spider, but with like a woman's like head, and it's got like uh, I forget its feet are different. Um, but there's a part where a character like goes down and they're like to where that thing is. And that aspect to me just felt very like horror vibes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can see that. Well, and it's got like the magic systems are interesting. It's got a couple different magic systems, but one of them reminded me a little bit of boundary side. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It's got, like a, yeah. It's got kind of a similar sort of mechanical, yes. like, step-by-step -step process type feel to it which is interesting yeah those um, constructs yeah. Uh, are you write kind of uh command code yeah and like then they have uh they're like there's low level ones that are very basic and then there's the really intelligent ones that are essentially advisors to the emperor they're that intelligent like ai it's sort of like yeah. a magical version of like computer coding and AI, creating AI kind of thing. It's really cool. It's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Jade, I feel like this is a book for you. Plus there's a super cute animal companion. Oh. That's like yeah. a, an otter cat mix, basically, which that the, sounds the, how cute does that sound? Yeah. Uh, but, I wanted yeah. to ask if anybody is excited about the new Victoria Aveyard coming out. Maybe. Uh, what is it? Okay, so it's called Realm Breaker. So, from what I remember, Victoria Aviard hasn't written anything outside of the um, the Red, Red Queen series. No, she hasn't. Um, and I've read the first two in Red Queen, and I know a lot of people thought it was like really derivative, but I enjoyed those first two, but I never finished the series. So I'm curious to see what it's going to be like now that she's you know no longer a new author, like she's been writing for a while. Um, but it's like a chosen one story, but also with like a cast of interesting characters. It says there's a squire, an immortal, and an assassin, an ancient sorceress, a forger, and a bounty hunter. Together they stand against a vicious opponent, inv invincible and determined to burn all kingdoms to ash in an army unlike anything the realm has ever witnessed. But yeah, it's called Realm Breaker. Yeah. So I'm mostly it's just interested because well, I like chosen one stories, but because you know she hasn't really written anything outside of Red Queen, so I'm curious to see mm -hmm. what the series is going to be like. I am amused. Yeah. Like, nothing the realm has ever witnessed. I'm like that sounds a lot like stuff we witnessed before, which is funny. It's like an interesting path to go down when you're kind of known for having um, like a pretty tropey, tropey, yeah. yeah. But like I with you, it's been so long. I need to go back and reread and finish the series that I read the first two, and I was like, yeah, these are fun. Yeah. Um, 
That's but people, I, I really, yeah. I really liked the first one, I, and then I didn't really like the second one, so I never continued with the series. But like, I'm kind of, I, I'm like, tentatively I mean, interested. Like, if re if reviews are good, I will try it. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, like, same. Yeah. Home I'm Girls pretty much that series. I was missing her third book on audio at the gym, and I just gave up. I just, I was just like, I'm done. Oh, I yeah. I, I just, did you like the first two, yeah. or, or was the third one particularly I bad? Like the first one. I really liked the first one. The second one, I didn't like as much, but I was okay with it. And the third one just seemed to drag, and I, it didn't really go anywhere. So I they, gave up like midway through. They get pretty big, right? Those last couple? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people haven't actually finished the series. I feel like a lot of them give yeah. up. <laughs> I'm um, curious. I don't. I don't yeah, think it should have been that long. Like, I feel like it's it's a story that should have been concluded in like two or three books. Like yeah. that might have been part of her problem. That's a pet peeve of mine. I I think people really, yeah. I mean, it's also a function of publishing. But there's a lot of trilogies out there that should be duologies or even standalones. It's a first set. Isn't it life. four? Is it four books? It is yeah. like four books plus a novella. Yeah, I don't know. The I first not, book I liked a lot though. But I did not yeah. hate the conclusion of A Curse of Dark and Lonely. It was fine. It was fun. But I feel like that book could have been a standalone. That I think I would have liked a lot if it had been a standalone. I did. I actually have a whole list because um, I want to do a video about this very topic. So no. like, I always have that in my. Um, my end of the year book series tag I do, that's always one of my questions of what series did you read this year that should have just been a standalone? But you read so much, I can't read that many series that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Even though, I, man, I'm always, you guys, you're such fast readers. But um, are there any more uh, anticipated releases? I have Witch Shadow, which is the fourth book in the uh, Witchland series by Susan Dennard. Oh, yeah. The first book oh, yeah. Witch. So the fourth yeah. one comes out on the 22nd of June. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a while since I read the rest of the series. I think it's been quite a while since she's had a release in that world. But it was such an interesting like world with the like focus on the friendship and their dynamic and the powers mm -hmm. that these different witches have. Like, I, I like the yeah. yeah, how many more so do I, we know? I, so I don't know if they've officially announced, but I think there's two more i think two okay i have to wait till the series is over because i really liked what i read but there's so much time between the books i forget everything and it's yeah. one of those series where you need to remember a lot of the details to like yeah. get all yeah. the stuff so i'm like i need you to just finish the series so i can do one big binge because i liked what i read but i just couldn't yeah. remember it well well enough. so like i know they made her combine two story arcs into one for this book because they want to have a specific end date for the series so like she yeah. took like what was going to be two books and combined it into like one thing sort of, oh, <laughs> which I think is part of why it took her so long to like rewrite it and like get it where oh. it needed to be. But yeah, that's yeah. the man publishing. So that's one thing Jess Owens is uh, you know see videos where it's just like look at how awful <laughs> publishing can be and like even small stuff like saying like I think. I, I haven't read it, but I know a lot of Jim Butcher fans were really, really not pleased. And I don't know if that was his decision or the publisher, but the fact that the book should have been uh, one instead of two books, I think he even released them in the same year. Like he had the book written, um, but just the way they kind of push either to extend series or um, like, them right. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's what happens if you're going to yeah. publish, you know. Well, and sometimes, too, you can tell when an author was on a, under a deadline and it was, there was, yeah, there was a book that came out this year, actually, that was really disappointing because I was like, which was so underdeveloped. It was um, Phoenix Flame by Sarah Hollins, oh, okay. which is the sequel to Haven Fall. So it's like a YA fantasy. And it's like, there was like the bones of something good, but I was like, but it's like very short and super underdeveloped and had some plot holes. And I was like, this feels like an early draft. Like I, not I think I have the unpopular opinion, but I recently read The Gilded Ones. And I don't know if you guys have read that one yet. That one got pushed back. You did? Yeah. That yeah. ending was interesting i didn't like the ending i liked everything else about it so i still gave it like four and a half stars i think for a debut but like the ending was well the ending to me kind of almost yeah. negated the middle and so then i was like if we had talked yeah. about this before then none of this other stuff would have needed to have happened <laughs> so like it's kind the of hard to spoilers, yeah but. 
I mean, like, I think what she's doing in the book is important enough, like the themes she's exploring and stuff. Um, But yeah, the ending was not great. I just, uh, I don't know. Some of it felt like, no, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, so this is just like from having read it. It almost felt like a book that had the time to be edited maybe too much to like where it started to feel like maybe stuff was cut out. I don't know. Cause it would it, like, it's not a multiple point of view story, but every chapter, yeah. which the chapters are pretty short, it feels like a scene and then you jump ahead and then there's a scene and then you jump ahead and then there's a scene. Cause the whole middle is almost like a training montage. Yeah. Um, oh, so. okay. No, that's I don't, of. well, not, I mean, kind of. It's, I don't think it's been, um, I don't know if it's changed much in the last year because ARCs went out uh, oh, okay. like a yeah. year ago. Yeah. So I think she's been working on book two. I see. I don't, so I don't think the book itself has changed much. But yeah, the ending to me felt like she wasn't sure how to, because <clears throat> it's a pretty sophisticated story thematically. Mm -hmm. But then it felt to me like the ending, she wasn't, she didn't know how to land it, Wrap it if that yeah. makes sense. And is it so it was like, it no, series? it's the first in a series. So I'm curious to see like what happens next. But um, it happened, like everything happened too fast and easy. It like tied up in a neat little kind of in a bow where I was like, I was like, okay, like really, like everything's really, really hard for the book. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, boom, boom. Everything well, like, like, we romance. like, I don't know. The romance was... I mean, I didn't want the romance oh. to take over by any means, but it was mm -hmm. so it's like, I guess she's in love with this person now. And I wouldn't even say insta love. It was more of just like, it was instant for the reader. It feels like, is <laughs> like, she oh, guess, though? Like, oh yeah, she 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 thinks at one point toward the end, like, oh no, the boy I love is doing this thing again, which means that she thinks oh. that she's in love with somebody from the beginning, and I'm like. Like there's a, a yeah. lot. So I guess I guess I'm sort of it's a, like for me I'm like okay but like when I was a teenager I thought I was in love much faster too so like whatever it's fine she's like a teenager <laughs> like that's what they do. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I'm definitely do. unpopular. I think I'm unpopular opinion for that one. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, what about the too. next House of Dragons book? L, are you excited for that one? I feel like I'm not allowed to be <laughs> well come on no i, I okay, mean wait, after the author i mean i know the, yeah the author yeah. had a bad day and said some things that i definitely do not approve of but i'm still excited for it i really like the first one yeah i i know i mean i would love to read that one and i i mean i don't know if the oh come on given the way that sometimes book twitter can be uh so yeah yeah, and plus the like yeah. racial implications too of like the way she was talking and so you're like who she's talking to and what yes, she's talking about. I agree. I'm with I you. Agree. I don't think what she did was totally unforgivable. I legit, I'm like, were you drunk? Like, what the? That's heck? what I told That's Bethany. I, I was like, I genuinely wonder if she was on something because it just yeah. was so intense. Sure. It felt like so it was intense. I totally and, agree. Yeah, I mean, she's way I out of line so confused when people were talking about it because I was like Jessica Clueless because yeah. when I read House of Dragons then I was curious about the sequel and so I went to look up information and she hardly had any um, what's the, promotion for House of Dragons like none on her Instagram and then I was like well maybe her website some authors aren't really active on Instagram I like there's like hardly anything so I'm like she like didn't even promote this book and I remember people talking about like I didn't even know this book was a thing it just kind of came out and so I was yeah. like wondering if she had something going on in her personal life and I kept thinking I hope everything's okay you know with because she's it's very odd for an author to not talk about their book release at all basically you know and then, now that you say that l i was supposed to get a copy of house of dragons and then like all of the promo like it totally they flaked on me um so i yeah. don't know i don't That's so i was wondering if something I mean, I, happened I disagree with what she did right but i still kind of want to read the sequel because i really like yeah. the dragons in that book so i don't know I mean, the I know she got too. her. I know her agent dropped her. Yes, after which, all that. I heard. I talked to Jess about this. Apparently, that agent's a little. Sketchy. Yeah, that agent is sketchy anyway. But oh, really? Um, Great. I heard that. 
Because I was telling Jess, I thought it was a little suspicious that he kind of waited a little bit to drop her. It's yeah. like, I think he was trying to see yeah. the reaction. Yeah. Um, and then he was like, oh, I'm so not for this. And I'm like, you were not for it a mm -hmm. while after. I feel for people who already had read that first book because of what happened. And yeah, because I have a platform and I hadn't yet read it. I did just recently unhaul it because I'm like, I'm just not, I don't want to, I don't want to like it because I don't feel comfortable. Like, I just am not clear right. on where all of that stands and yeah. I don't yeah. want to platform yeah, no, it I without clarity. But position because I yeah. had already read it. Yeah. I just, well, I'm I not sure, happen. like, you like, like a book, if I'm then, wrong, but she, like, didn't really apologize. That unless she did, she, it, like, it, she had kind of a non-apology, too. So, I don't know. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's the thing yeah. for me, is I'm, like, if somebody's, like, look, I was, like, in a really bad place, I'm so sorry. Like, if you, like, legitimately apologize for something, I don't think you can. I think you can come back from it, but I just... That's a really apology good. was kind of I shouldn't have said that and I'm <clears> more <throat> to learn about the um I forget what it's called but that movement about kind of exposing people to more works for this uh, text, I think. yes yes Disrupt thank text. you um yeah. it was like I'm gonna do more to learn about this yeah, yeah. that's a good point about the apology Bethany I don't know I'm still yeah. kind of on the fence about whether I'm actually gonna read it I I, I hate when authors do things like that when you I know like, right it's just like, yeah. Yeah. the, so the, the up and downside of yeah. having more access to authors is that you learn some of them are awesome and you learn some of them uh it gives them an opportunity to show their ass <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of them just want to take away their social media yeah, yes. for real. Well, um, as we were saying in my yet. live stream last week, we really they just all need a group chat. It's like, where's your yeah. group chat? That's our that's gonna yeah. be our new world hopper merch. Is like, where? Tell it to yeah. your group chat. Don't tell this yeah. to the rest. Yeah. Of like I I typed out uh, like, uh, if you have nothing nice to say, talk to your friends because apps everybody needs to vent. We're basically done talking about anticipated releases. So I have one more. Yeah. 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 One more, and then we'll chat for a sec, and then. Okay. We'll, okay. Um, so this one, I it's a debut. And so I really have no idea if it would be one that I would like, but it has a lot of my like buzzwords in it. So it's called The End of Men by Christina Sweeney Baird. It's a science fiction, adult science fiction coming out at the end of April. It says set in a world where a virus stalks our male population, The End of Men is an electrifying and unforgettable debut from a remarkable new talent that asks, what would our world truly look like without men? So I love virus outbreak stories yes, and the whole like without men part, I think is really interesting. It, so I'm very curious what people are going to say about this one. It sounds like why the last man, do you know that story? Mm -mm. It's about literally the entire male population gets wiped out except for one guy. And then mm -hmm. Y being like the chromosome. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because the women of the world are like, well, if we want to make sure mankind continues, like, you know, we got to be like, you're our, you're our guy. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, apparently it's really funny though. Uh, like very, it's a comic book series for anybody. Oh. Who's, but um, oh, the last man. Yeah. Yeah. I've read those. They're good. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, but I, as soon as you said virus, I'm like, there's Jade's buzz. Yeah. It was that's really my funny buzzword, the virus. It was yeah. funny though to hear you say, it has my buzzwords, and then say the title is the end I, of the end. Of end of man. It's like, yes. It's great. It's well, all men. Uh, for those of you in the comments about to type, not all men, we, we know. We know. You can just save yourself those. I got straight. one that's not all men. I, I yeah. do too. Yes. There's some good ones. We know. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's the last one I had that I wanted to touch on. I was just going to say about the like the joke about if you have nothing nice to say, talk to your friends. It's just everybody needs to vent, right? Like we, it's healthy. And but for me, what is healthy about venting is that everybody is petty sometimes, of course. So get the pettiness out with people that you trust who know that this is just a petty moment for you. And then you get that negative, that negativity out of you so that you can go on being a good person and not say that stuff to other people or like on a social media rants or, you know, like, so you're not basically an a-hole to like other humans. Yeah. I, I also just, I don't know, maybe this is like my accounting training where I have a very strong sense of like, I could be audited someday. Um, I just, I'm really shocked at some of the things that professionals choose to put online where I'm like, 
the receipts will come back at some point. Like, do you not have any, like, I don't know. It's like the HR, like legal liability side of me that's just like, don't put that in writing and put it on the internet. Like that is so dumb. And I think there are definitely moments where people, like we've talked about before, people change or you say something and the way you said it isn't really how you meant it. Um, doesn't mean that anybody's wrong to perceive it uh, differently than how you intended, but um, I know like an example of some uh, uh, something I did that where I was like, you know what, I, I don't think that came out the way I wanted and it's certainly not. So I just was like, I'm gonna take this down because I feel like it's a negative thing to put out into the you know YouTube, which was um, when there was the like casting controversy for the Witcher Netflix show. And there was the ridiculous like, what do they say? Like, it's okay to be white or something like Netflix, it's okay to be white because they put out a casting call and the casting call was like basically anybody could you know but i don't think it had like white listed or something just like colorblind casting that wasn't like yeah and requiring so, you to be a certain race to audition for a certain role yeah and it might have even like not had white on the list or something so people were really upset and it wasn't even for sure if it was real or not and so the witcher fandom has got some not great people in it for sure Yep. But what made me a little sad was that there were a lot of people who are Polish because it's a Central Eastern European folklore inspired story who felt like it was kind of being stripped of its folklore elements and like their culture. They were so excited because the media often paints Central and Eastern European people a certain way and they were so excited to have their thing to be on this high budget adaptation and they felt like it wasn't getting... Um, like it wasn't getting that. But those people got lumped in with the people who were like upset because like, it's okay to be white. How dare you be against white people? They were getting kind of like lumped together, which the cultural thing had nothing to do with like, oh, the actress for Yennefer is not pasty white, right? It had nothing to do with that. And it just made me sad to see people like legitimately saying, I would like to see my culture represented, like lumped in with the other group that was being terrible. But I definitely felt like, the way that it was articulated on my end made it sound like I was saying like, oh no, it's totally fine. They want their culture to be represented by being white, which wasn't at all what I was saying. And, but yeah. I feel like afterwards I was like, I can see why it might be perceived that way. And so I was like, I'm gonna take this down because I'm not gonna leave. But I did that magical thing where I upset everybody on both sides. <laughs> like, <laughs> some people were like magical that's a, that's a I yahtzee was, i was a dumb sjw and racist and so i was like wow i hit the jackpot on this one so congratulations um, yeah so but like i was like you know i didn't articulate myself well enough i didn't express like the full context i feel like in a way that made it so that people who aren't as involved with this you know fandom and the controversy around it could fully understand all the things going on like it was totally on me and I was like, I don't want to put this out there and look like it's some anthem for the dum-dums in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so I definitely think there's times when people say or do things. I think the, even though we were talking about before, the Naomi Novik um, thing with uh, Deadly Education, I think was an example. People can, like Reed with Cindy talked about it and stuff and other people have as well. But I think that's another example of like, oh, I don't think she, you know, like it's okay if you were hurt by it, that's valid. I also don't know that she meant to like hurt anybody's feelings. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a whole, you know. And she she, she makes some revisions revision. to it. Yeah, she said she future, did, yeah. future publications wouldn't include some of those uh, passages. God. Yep. But yeah. I appreciate. That's all you can really ask from people is like, if you make a mistake, say you're sorry and learn from it. Like that's. Yeah. yeah. I think people are actually usually pretty gracious if you come at it with like humility and a willingness to try to make it right. I think we could definitely do a whole yeah. video about, I, I mean, it's a video that would involve, if we were to, to discuss like what is forgivable, what do you personally think crosses the line? What are you supposed to do? Quote unquote, as an influencer, you know, do you keep your books? Do you, all that stuff could be a whole video, but because it involves um, so many it's got so much nuance to it. You have to like really make sure you have a, 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 a group of people who are all going to come at it with different point of views. You know, you can't have a bunch of yes men basically <laughs> that are like, yeah, exactly. You need you need to push and because I don't think we've discovered yet. I think BookTube is still such a new thing in the grand scheme of like marketing and um, authors having more strong 
social media presences that we haven't quite navigated yet how to go about when an author does something and you know the role of a reader and the role of a booktuber and what they're supposed to do and we haven't we haven't agreed on it um so i think it's still difficult yeah. to figure out what to do I feel like but I i'm not sure I'm not sure. Well, like everybody will agree anyway on like what That's are the true. things that cross the line because I think that can be really personal as to like yeah. what is too much for you to support an author personally or not. Um, but yeah, I do think taking it seriously is important. Like and recognizing not just like what do you like or keep on your shelves privately, but like what do you choose to promote on your platform as an influencer? Like I mm -hmm. think considering that's important. Yeah. Yeah, we do as well. But this is a fun anticipated releases video <laughs> slash rant about. I'm sorry. Dragons yeah, went everywhere. Weird, weird, People who uh, don't like tangents are not going to like this one, but that's weird, part of no. the chattiness. <laughs> weird yeah. pastor sermons about women remaining hot. Yeah. <laughs> stay hot. That's that's actually the message of this video is hashtag stay hot. Stay hot. Stay yeah. hot. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. I think I gotta say in the title of this one, like anticipated re releases plus some fun side tangents or something, <laughs> yeah. because, or a lot of side tangents. So maybe what we can do, if you guys don't mind, I can always watch back, but um, if you wanna send me the ones we talked yeah. about, and then that way I can be like, if anybody doesn't want to listen to the rants and they just wanna know the books, here's a list. Yeah, I'll put it in our IG chat. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. I remember. <laughs> I don't remember Anybody what they were. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can watch it back and just write it down. Yeah, that's an option too. And listen to our side tangents, and then like put my head in my hands, like, oh man, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> this is what happens when you're actually friends, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, just like, you just start talking as if the camera's not recording. <laughs> Real Nothing talk with the world juicy, hoppers. Though. Nothing too juicy. But anyway, yeah. thanks everybody for watching mm -hmm. and listening to the rants. I think. Uh, as soon as Jesse couldn't, you know, like uh, stay and she had to leave, I was like, I mean, we can just keep talking. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have tried to cut it if we were close to being done. But it was a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, for yeah. joining. And uh, we'll see you guys.